Hello, this is day 67 of reading one canto of the Divine Comedy every day, which means it is the last canto of Purgatorio, Canto 33. We have 33 days left in which we will do the Paradiso, and then you're done. Then you've read the entire Divine Comedy. I'll read through Canto 33 from the Longfellow translation before giving a few quick comments. Deus venerunt gentes, alternating now three, now four, melodious psalmody, the maidens in the midst of tears began, and Beatrice, compassionate and sighing, listened to them with such a countenance that scarce more changed was Mary at the cross. But when the other virgins place had given for her to speak, uprisen to her feet with color as of fire, she made response, Modicum et non videbitiste, et iterum, my sister's predilect, modicum et vos videbitis me. Then all the seven in front of her she placed, and after her, by beckoning only, moved me and the lady and the sage who stayed. So she moved onward, and I do not think that her tenth step was placed upon the ground when with her eyes upon mine eyes she smote. And with a tranquil aspect, come more quickly, to me she said, that, if I speak with thee, to listen to me thou mayst be well placed. As soon as I was with her, as I should be, she said to me, Why, brother, dost thou not venture to question now, in coming with me? As unto those who are too reverential, speaking in presence of superiors, who drag no living utterance to their teeth, it me befell, that without perfect sound began I, my necessity, Madonna, you know, and that which thereunto is good. And she to me, of fear and bashfulness henceforward I will have thee strip thyself, so that thou speak no more as one who dreams. Know that the vessel which the serpent broke was, and is not. But let him who is guilty think that God's vengeance does not fear a sop. Without an heir shall not forever be the eagle that left his plumes upon the car, whence it became a monster, then a prey. For verily I see, and hence narrate it, the stars already near to bring the time, from every hindrance safe, and every bar, within which a five hundred, ten, and five, one sent from God, shall slay the thievish woman and that same giant who is sinning with her. And peradventure my dark utterance, like Themis and the Sphinx, may less persuade thee, since in their mode it clouds the intellect. But soon the facts shall be the naiads, who shall this difficult enigma solve, without destruction of the flocks and harvests. Note thou, and even as by me are uttered these words, so teach them unto those who live that life which is a running unto death. And bear in mind, whenever thou writest them, not to conceal what thou hast seen, the plant, that twice already has been pillaged here. Whoever pillages or shatters it with blasphemy of deed offendeth God, who made it holy for his use alone. For biting that, in pain and in desire, five thousand years and more the firstborn soul craved him, who punished in himself the bite. Thy genius slumbers, if it deem it not, for special reason so preeminent in height, and so inverted in its summit. And if thy vain imaginings had not been water of Elsa round about thy mind, and Pyramus to the mulberry their pleasure, Thou, by so many circumstances, only the justice of the interdict of God morally in the tree wouldst recognize. But since I see thee in thine intellect converted into stone and stained with sin, so that the light of my discourse doth daze thee, I will too, if not written, at least painted, thou bear it back within thee, for the reason that synced with palm the pilgrim's staff is born, and I, as by a signet is the wax which does not change the figure stamped upon it, my brain is now imprinted by yourself. But wherefore so beyond my power of sight soars your desirable discourse, that I, the more I strive, so much the more I lose it? That thou mayest recognize, she said, the school which thou hast followed, and mayest see how far its doctrine follows after my discourse, and mayest behold your path from the divine distant, as far as separated is from earth the heaven that highest hastens on. Whence her, I answered, I do not remember that ever I estranged myself from you, nor have I conscience of it that reproves me. And if thou art not able to remember, smiling, she answered, recollect thee now that thou this very day hast drunk of Lethe, and if from smoke a fire may be inferred, 
Such an oblivion clearly demonstrates some error in thy will elsewhere intent. Truly from this time forward shall my words be naked, so far as it is befitting to lay them open unto thy rude gaze. And, more coruscant and with slower steps, the sun was holding the meridian circle, which, with the point of view, shifts here and there, when halted, as he cometh to a halt, who goes before a squadron as its escort, if something new he find upon his way. The ladies seven, at a dark shadow's edge, such as, beneath green leaves and branches black, the alp upon its frigid border wears. In front of them, the tigress and Euphrates, methought, I saw a fourth issue from one fountain, and slowly part, like friends, from one another. O light, O glory of the human race, what stream is this which here unfolds itself from out one source, and from itself withdraws? For such a prayer, t'was said unto me, Pray, Matilda, that she tell thee. And here answered, as one does who doth free himself from blame, the beautiful lady. This and other things were told to him by me, and sure I am the water of Lethe has not hid them from him. And Beatrice, perhaps a greater care, which oftentimes our memory takes away, has made the vision of his mind obscure. But you know, eh, behold, that yonder rises. Lead him to it, and, as thou art accustomed, revive again the half-dead virtue in him. Like gentle soul that maketh no excuse, but makes its own will by another's will, as soon as by a sign it is disclosed, even so, when she had taken hold of me, the beautiful lady moved, and unto Statius said, in her womanly manner, Come with him. If, reader, I possessed a longer space for writing it, I yet would sing in part of the sweet drought that never would satiate me. But inasmuch as full are all the leaves made ready for this second canticle, the curb of art no farther lets me go. From the most holy water I returned regenerate, in the manner of new trees that are renewed with a new foliage, pure and disposed to mount unto the stars. In this last canto of the Purgatorio, there are a few things that are helpful in understanding the Paradiso, at least in part, as well as somewhat summing up what has come before. Firstly, Beatrice makes a prophecy that the Caesars, the emperors of Rome, will eventually come back. There will eventually be another centralized power that will put an end to all the chaos in Italy and in the world and would allow the church to keep to its proper place to spiritual matters rather than temporal ones. As Dante is hearing Beatrice speak about this, he's confused and says, why is it that I'm having such a hard time following your words? He's confused and says, why can I not understand what you're saying? Why, why is it so far beyond my grasp? Which is a fair question. I mean, he's a very intelligent and well-educated person. Why is it so difficult for him to follow this? And it's, just, it's difficult for us, too. She has said to him, you know, watch these scenes with the chariot that, that are full of symbols and hard to unravel. We have no clue what's going on unless centuries worth of scholarship tells us. And she says, well, you have to understand that that the ways of God are so far above the ways of man that it's going to be much harder for you to understand. Not because it's unreasonable, because, but because his reason is so much higher. And for the same reason, Beatrice, who is in heaven, who is one of the blessed souls, she is operating on a higher level than him. In the same way that if they existed, two-dimensional beings could not really interact with three-dimensional beings, except in a very, very limited way, and they wouldn't really understand what was going on. In just the same way, or perhaps uh, that to the nth degree, that's our brains, our minds, our intellect, trying to understand God. It's not that he is unreasonable and that, you know, faith or trust is a, you know, a divorce from the mind, from the intellect. It's that his reason is so far above ours, so much greater than ours, that it is not going to be possible for us as humans to understand him. There is a limit to what we can know. It's the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, but also just human nature and, and theology. And this is important to recognize why Virgil could not stay with Dante further, why he couldn't bring him any farther, and also why the cardinal virtues are not as useful anymore, why from this point on grace is needed, why 
faith, hope, and charity are required to understand, to continue to move further to God. And at this very moment, Beatrice then walks Dante to a second river, the river Unoe, which will restore to him the memory of good deeds that he has done. And this, she says, will help him to understand a little bit better. What a beautiful moment in which we see that to understand God in the way that Dante needs to at this point, to get closer to him, to make that leap across which reason can't take him, Beatrice begins by renewing the memory of the good that he has done. She literally calls the good more strongly to his mind so that he can remember it. And why? Because God is good and God is love. And thus, Dante says rightly at the end of the canto, he is now ready for the stars to ascend to the stars, the heavens. That's all for today, though. I'll see you tomorrow.